okay. Girls be complaining about this, complaining about this. This video has been a long time coming, practically a year in the making. And man, did I go through journeys of what I wanted to talk about, how I wanted to talk about it. And I think I'm finally in a place where I am grounded enough and healed enough to actually share va valuable advice and not just bash my ex. <laughs> which is what the in initial inclination would be, you know, when you're traumatized and you're affected and triggered by somebody, you want to retaliate. But this is not what this is. This is about sharing the facts, my perspective of the truth. I have a whole video on perspectives if you want to check that out. And getting into it to really explain the realizations I've come to that have helped me and that will help me moving forward and that might help you you, girl or guy, that is in a current situation that looks like this, that is thinking about a situation that, that will potentially look like this, or that has been through this and is still sorting it out, processing it, and still confused. Today we're going to talk about the difference between giving and sharing, and how I invested, you could say, $100,000 into somebody and got nothing in return. All right, all right, I'm being dramatic. I didn't get nothing in return, obviously. I got a lot of life experience. <laughs> but uh, it is interesting how you can invest $100,000 in somebody and then you leave the relationship. They are flourishing financially and you're broke. So <laughs> yeah, and this is a very common thing that happens, especially with women or people of feminine dominant energy uh, dating people with masculine dominant energy. I don't know why that is and I think it's just the nature of these two types of energies. Feminine seems to be geared towards selflessness, others giving, um, nurturing. This is based on a lot of books that I've read but also just pure observation. Masculine energy is more uh, selfish, self-centered, uh, taking, um, just, yeah, self-oriented. Uh, and just a side note, I really think we all have a mixture of both, right? And it's good to have a good balance inside of you of masculine and feminine. And I think the journey of each person coming onto this earth is to find that balance. I find a lot of girls who are usually feminine dominant grow up and they have to learn to be more selfish, to be more self-centered, to take care of themselves first before taking care of others. And boys who are usually masculine dominant have to learn to be less selfish, less self-centered, to see other people, to want to take care of other people, be it friends, family, and then society as a whole. So that those are our journeys. Um, just wanted to Put a side note on that, I can do a separate video if you guys want, but that's pretty much the gist of what I think about that. So being a naturally generous woman, I've given in the past. Now I know the difference between giving and sharing. I actually came to this realization, or rather I learned it from my mom, who, who's the one who explained it to me. She's also a life coach for those who are interested. Link in the description box. And she was the one who was like, you know, you need to learn the difference between giving and sharing. And she explained it to me and I was like, this is amazing. I feel very freed now. So basically, obviously, sharing is a form of giving. But there's a distinction between the two that I want to make clear. Giving involves sacrifice, okay? You're taking from what you already have and giving it to someone else. So you're taking away from your stock. Giving can lead to depletion whereas sharing preserves completion. Sharing is a form of giving, but it's giving part of the whole all the while, preserving satisfaction and a sense of completeness for, the, for yourself, you know, the person who is giving. It is the giving that you do after your needs are satisfied, after your needs are met. I mean, you can always give sometimes, share other times. It is fully your choice. There's no right or wrong. Just 
trying to save you some heartache. Giving typically comes with some type of expectation of something in return, be it validation, appreciation, love, a simple thank you. Whereas sharing is kind of a detached form of giving. You are really ready to part with what it is that you are giving regardless of the outcome. And when it comes to giving, I'm going to talk about, you know, women and men in hetero relationships because that's my case. Generally, women give and they are hoping for something in return or expecting something in return and feel owed something in return. Sometimes the giving, if you really are honest with yourself, it comes from a place of, I hope to buy your love, your affection, your respect, or whatever it is. I'll get into it. And I think it's time for girls to stop complaining about men taking, taking all the time and start owning their responsibilities. You're giving, you don't have to start sharing. Cause let me clue you in onto a little secret. The men that you give to <laughs> depleting yourself in the process, they will resent you. I've read it in books. This is, it's actually a textbook thing, which is what's so sad. <laughs> It's so common. Women see a guy who needs help. Guy sees a girl who is too generous. She gives, he takes, he builds himself up. He feels great about himself. He's a new man. He looking at you like, you loved me when I was nothing. What does that say about the self-worth you have? You clearly aren't looking for much and you don't really have high expectations or high values or high standards. You accepted me at my low. So now that I'm actually out here popping, I can get a, another girl that has standards, that wants a guy like me, that'll be like, oh, damn, he's something that wouldn't have looked at me when I was in my low stage. Now I have access to a, a different pool of women. I'm gonna let you go. Thanks for the service. Mother Teresa, you did a great job. On to the next. This happens very often or they just like do not acknowledge at all the fact that you helped. It's kind of like, well, nobody asked you to. <laughs> That's kind of the reaction you get. They don't want to feel indebted generally. I mean, people don't. Who wants to feel indebted? So they generally, especially takers, they just find a way to shift responsibility and be like, no, no, I never, you know, forced it on you. Uh, or ask for anything kind of um, approach to it. And then you're left feeling dumb. So this is just to help avoid this. It also is really tied to codependency, like I said, because um, in codependency, there is this concept of depleting myself to replenish the other and somehow securing their love and, and um, just attachment, I guess. It's just unhealthy. Somebody that moves through the world with a lot of self-love, self-respect, and who is taking care of themselves, is attractive to other healthy people who are self-centered, well, self-centered is the wrong word, but who stand on their own two feet. And generally speaking, we all want healthy interactions, healthy relationships, but it starts with our own relationship with ourself. When we are taking care of someone else, we are actually putting ourselves second. And that's the energy we're creating inside of ourselves. And what happens? We end up in relationships where the person is putting us second as well. And we're kind of like, how do I always end up with people who are not prior prioritizing me? And it's like, honey, you're not prioritizing you. And I can say that for my, from my own experience of going to the grocery store and thinking about my partner's needs before my own, of always thinking about what, is, what does he want to eat? Oh, I see something. Oh, he would love this. But I see something that I need and it's like, oof, maybe I shouldn't invest or buy that for myself. You know, there's a lot more caution in taking care of myself than there is in taking care of somebody else that I love. And that, that is the... Um, manifestation of putting yourself second. Your inner child is screaming to be loved and seen for attention, attention, affection, nurturing, and you're out here giving it to someone else. I went through that journey and I, I saw what the outcome looks like. And it's, like I said, it's textbook. It happens to a lot of us. It's not something that is one in a million far from. There is a way to, to, to get out of that. And it is to take care of yourself First, there is nothing wrong with being selfish. Selfish, I mean, I'm going to do a separate video on that term because it's a loaded term and people think it's wrong, but actually being self-centered to a certain degree is a win-win situation. You take care of yourself, your partner, whoever else, whoever you're with sees this, 
and is admires it. Even if they don't like it, even if they, they try to convince you to give to them, even if they try to manipulate you, you into thinking you're selfish, all that, there is inside of that person, unless they're unhealthy, then they can't see it. But a healthy person will see that and respect that as, oh, wow, you have self-respect and I respect that. You respect you, so I respect you. But also, there is so much beauty in seeing somebody struggling and being like, you know what? I can't give to you in this situation that you're in. I can assist you in ways that are not detrimental to me. But at a certain point, I trust that you are capable and that you can handle your stuff and that you will get through this. You will get out of it. I trust you and I admire the strength that is inside of you. And I'm calling you to tap into that and to bring that to the surface. That's what you're telling someone when you're not out here taking care of them and, you know, taking their problems away by handling it for them. You're saying, I know that you're capable of handling this. That's beautiful. And everybody, especially men, but everybody wants to feel proud of themselves, right? Wants to know that they can take care of themselves. And there is such pride and accomplishment that you're giving them that opportunity. And the fact that you just have faith in them and belief in them, it'll fuel them even more. And even if they're going through a hard time, if they make it out on their own two feet and you assisted, but you did not take over, you were sharing knowledge, uh, nurturing time, um, wealth, whatever it is that you were sharing, but not giving to take away the problem. Trust and believe they're more likely to appreciate you far more down the line than the opposite, right? We all have inner strength and power, capabilities to get ourselves out of our own binds. So it's about remembering that, that it's inside of you, but it's inside of someone you love as well. No matter how hard they are screaming and thrashing around for you to take care of their problems. A lot of people just want other people to, to take care of them. But the only person you are sent here on earth to take care of is you. Once you got that down packed, then sure, you can look into taking care of someone else, helping someone else out, giving to someone else, sharing with someone else. But make sure that you only help when asked, first of all. And when you are ready to part ways with whatever it is that you are sharing with someone else, without any animosity, tension, or regret, or a kind of guilt, or any negativity, just feel it out. If it feels bad to share with this person, don't do it. If you're hoping that they will love you more or appreciate you more or you're kind of auditioning for their affection or attention, don't do it. If you hope they will appreciate and respect you for giving more to them than you are to yourself, don't do it. Your time, your energy, your money, your presence, your words, your skills, your heart, your you is your own. Give that to yourself, baby. Let's take an example to make this a little bit more concrete before I go into what happened to me in my relationship. Let's imagine you're with a friend, you have two sandwiches and they had uh, a yogurt. They're hungry and um, they asked for food. You know that with one sandwich, you're full. The other sandwich was kind of an extra. You can either eat it later um, put it in the fridge. Maybe if you forget about it, you'll throw it away. You really aren't attached to that extra sandwich because you ate the first sandwich. You are full. You cannot eat another bite. And your friend is still hungry and it's kind of like talking about it and asking for food. You know, in that circumstance, it's sharing because that extra sandwich, you know, you could have just left it on the table and forgotten about it and you wouldn't be sour over it, you know, like you, you have other sandwiches at home, whatever it is, it's not really something you were attached to. So you're like, oh, here, I have another one. And now you're happy because you made somebody happy in the moment. You, uh, at least you, you assume you did and you can walk away feeling good. Now imagine they eat the sandwich and they don't like it. You know, they complained about it or whatever. They're just like, Ugh. if you were attached to that sandwich, if you were like, oh man, uh, you gave half of your sandwich and you're still hungry and you give it to someone that spits it out and throws it away, trust that you are going to be hurt. Ah! Ah, damn. But if you weren't really attached to that sandwich, you'll kind of laugh it off and be like, oh, you didn't like pickles? Oh, I didn't know. Sorry. I mean, I tried to help. And you'll shrug it off and you'll move on and you'll completely forget about it. You, you sense the nuance, the difference, your needs are met. That extra sandwich can now fulfill its journey, its purpose in the world, free from you. <laughs> Don't give yourself away 
share your surplus. I will detail what happened in my situation just so you can get an understanding because I feel like a lot of people have been in the situation and sometimes hearing it, getting an illustration, a depiction of what it looks like when you give instead of sharing <laughs> makes the point come across a little stronger. I was dating somebody over the course of about 10 years, okay? And pretty quickly in the beginning of our relationship, a situation arose where he was cut off financially by his parents. So me being in love and wanting this person obviously to stick around and not move away because we were living in Canada and this person would have had to move, you know, overseas back to their home country if they didn't have money, obviously. I wanted to help out, but also I wanted to keep them close, obviously, right? So there is this selfish need to keep the person around and this selfless desire to see somebody you love not suffer, right? To be at ease, to be well, to be taken care of. And I had a whole bunch of mommy and daddy issues that came into the mix. It's a long story, but the facts are, I started taking care of this person financially for years. I think I had already been sharing my money with him before, but there was a, a moment where we were tallying how much I gave because he wanted to pay me back eventually. And I found that in my notes recently. That's how I figured that I had invested over a hundred thousand Canadian dollars into this person because a month I was taking care of everything. And I'm talking about rent, phone bill, electricity, the basics, right? Then you have food, you have internet, TV, obviously, transportation, an allowance on top of everything, because I wanted this person to live comfortably, so I gave him an allowance so he had pocket money to live freely. Trips, obviously, if we, we traveled, which we didn't do much, but still, I would cover the costs. Movies, dinners, all, again, not things we did often, but still, costs covered. Gifts, there were occasional gifts, not that many, but still. Equipment for work, anything, anything that was needed, I covered it. So you can only imagine how much that is per month, um, at least a thousand, at least. It adds up, it adds up. Now in my head, I'm thinking I'm with someone who has such a good heart. If it was the other way around, this person would take care of me without batting an eyelash. They're just as generous as me. This is the thought in my head. And you know, obviously you're taking care of someone hoping that you'll you'll receive the same type of energy in return if ever you're down and out and you're in need. So fast forward to when we break up. We were also working together. Um, I'm, I'm talking in abstracts for those who don't know, but there's, I'm sure a few of you know what I'm talking about. We had a shared venture, a YouTube channel, and I basically decided to obviously leave the channel. I could no longer even just work with this person. It was difficult at this stage in our interactions. And I thought that easy peasy, okay, I'm gonna stop working uh, for the channel, but I'm just gonna ask this person to send me, you know, monthly, whatever, half of the earnings of all of the videos that we did together, which was like something like over 90% of the videos on the YouTube channel anyways. And I just wanted, you know, half of my earnings, especially because I'm leaving this relationship, right? A lot of things that happened near the end where I wasn't working, uh, going through uh, mental health issues, we'll say, and I, just depleted my my savings and I didn't have money to really stand on my own two feet. This is where I was at. And I wanted to change career paths from web design to something else. So huge kind of hole. And this person that I had carried through his hole to him having a full-time job plus the YouTube venture that would not have happened without me. Now this person is financially stable, more than financially stable. And I'm expecting, you know, there's gonna be love thrown my way. Nope. So first of all, I had to fight to justify receiving 50% of the royalties earned on the videos in perpetuity. This person was like, no, I mean, um, you leave the channel, that's it, that's all, you know? Excusez-moi, that was already a shock for me that these that this channel that would not have existed without me already won. I provided the equipment for the filming of the videos and the computer and the editing and all that. I provided initial uh, learning, you know, information on how to use software and all that stuff. That's obviously my ex 
learned the rest on his own and did all of the editing for years. And yeah, obviously he did a lot of the work, but also I was the co-host and the magic that was on screen was because of our interaction. It wasn't just him or me. It was the tandem that created the magic of the channel. Um, it wouldn't have the branding that it had if it wasn't for me, um, you know, uh, design work, all of these things, a website, um, you know, obviously he did a lot of work, but so did I. That was the point. It was just like, even just the mere fact of being in Canada in a, in a situation that he was in where he couldn't even work. He didn't have a work permit that, you know, he didn't have an, a, a citizenship that I provided for him, that I did the whole process, you know, for free. Um, obviously he paid me back the fees, but did he pay me for doing all of the paperwork? No. Um, did he pay me for helping him train for the citizenship exam? No. Um, for giving him the tools to succeed? No. Uh, these were all free, right? These are all things that I, I just gave uh, out of the goodness of my heart. Expecting at least appreciation, consideration, um, some kind of like, you know, thank you and recognition. So yeah, while I was working a full-time job and then coming home and doing YouTube videos with this person who didn't have anything else to do but work on the YouTube videos, that was his job. You know, I'm taking care of the whole household, plus I was cooking for myself when I would come home from work. Mm -hmm. Pl uh, well, cooking for myself slash us. And plus, you know, uh, cleaning the apartment, that was still on me most of the time. I don't think he... There's a lot going into that. You know, I also didn't trust him to do a lot of things, which is my I, I'm responsible for that, for not letting other people do things their way. I had a certain way of doing things. So I will take my responsibility for that, for not letting him do more. That's why I'm saying. But still, so I'm, you know, you're doing all these things, even if it was my choice to to take care of us. I was very us oriented. He was very him oriented. I mean, obviously I'm here taking care of me and him. He doesn't have to take care of me and I never let him take care of me. So obviously he's not gonna know how to take care of anyone but himself. And this is what we do in relationships as women. This is what I'm talking about. So yeah, this environment that I created that I is clearly the support, the basis, the foundation on which he sat his butt down and could develop himself and create the life that he is now living, right? Um, if I was his mother, obviously, he would recognize the, the work, the effort, the investment, the environment, the nurturing, the giving, the, the everything. But I'm not his mama. So I don't get default respect. And this is what I think a lot, I've seen a lot of women fall into this trap. You are not his mama. Stop taking care of him. Let him become a man because trust me, he will not respect you the way he would if his mother did all the things that you were doing for him. He wouldn't. So um, that's what I had to learn is that I had to already fight for that. So yeah, we, we developed a contract when I left the YouTube channel and um, he agreed to give me half of the royalties for two years and then a settlement agreement, a, a fixed amount to settle like I release all the content, it's all his. If it keeps making money in, in perpetuity, it's all his. He had convinced me that after two years, nobody would be watching our old videos anyways. So I settled on a low settlement amount. Here's another tip. If you're doing anything that has to do with like settlement agreements or money things, use equations, not fixed numbers. Because what we should have done was, all right, let's take the average earnings over the two past years and make an estimation of either one year, two years, or five years, a five-year estimation, um, multiply the average or the median, whatever you want to use, uh, by the number of years, and that'll be the settlement amount. It should have been an equation. So we're fast forward to two years later, after we wrote this contract, had it notarized, signed it, it's over, out of each other's lives. I realized that the settlement amount that we had agreed upon, when he had convinced me that I would be making pennies, you know, at the end of the two years? Well, it was low considering it was like, what, $500 settlement amount, but uh, we were still, I was still making between 300 and 600 a month off of royalties. So a 500 settlement amount was nothing when you consider that those 300 to 500 to 600 a month, he's still earning those and he will still be earning those. I did some estimations for at least, at least, I don't know, a couple of years 
unless things drastically change on YouTube. So I, I just asked him, oh, could we revise that settlement amount to the equation? Let's do it in equation based, which is what we should have done to begin with, instead of making it fixed sum based. You know, I thought that I didn't even think this would be an issue. I'm immediately hit with a, yeah, you know what? You already signed. We already agreed upon this. Can we just like move on? Those words triggered me. Can we just like move on? Really? Wow. Okay. Okay. Mm. I'm not even asking for a uh, charity. I'm not even asking you to pay me back all the money that I invested in you to secure the life that you had for what, like eight years out of the 10 years we were together? No, I'm just asking for a fair, logical, logic-based, financial-based business settlement agreement. And that wasn't met. Then he kind of played the manipulative, oh, I'm so sorry, how much do you want card when I fired back with yelling and I'm not proud of myself, but you know, I was cursing in my message. I was very, very upset and I let 10 years of pent up anger that I had not never really expressed come out. Then I went petty because he triggered me and I was like, I was gonna give you the fair amount, which was like something like 4,000 based on calculations. But I was like, I want 10,000. <laughs> I was like, screw it. You know, you owe me a hundred thousand, but I'll settle for 10. And this person was like, oh, I'm not giving you more than 1,500. Or if you want, I can just like, delete all of the videos. So now we're going into blackmail. You see this person that I was so generous with? Um, yeah, so now we're come to a point where this person is throwing me an ultimatum, you know, like take the money that I'm willing to give you or I'll delete the videos. At this point, I was just like, I don't want you to keep making money off of my back, keep profiting off of me. So yes, you know what, give me the 500 and delete the videos. And it was kind of like, I never said I'd give you 500, it's either 1,500, or I delete the videos. It's like, okay, fine. Don't give me money. I don't even want money at this point. I just want to be free of you and your shackles and your manipulative ways. Just delete all of the videos. That way I'm free. No more drama, no more issues, no more problem. Ah, now Mr. Mr. comes back with a, I need to think about it and comes back with a, you know what? I'm just going to give you 1,500 and I'm not going to delete the videos because I spent so much time and energy on them. Mm, didn't say that when you suggested to delete them, did you? <laughs> so that was our last interaction. And then eventually I had to process the feelings. I contacted him again during, on his birthday, actually this year, just to like, I was going through a lot and I was um, acknowledging my faults in the relationship, such as, taking care of somebody when I was never asked to, which is on me. Not letting somebody be a partner in a relationship, but being the caretaker, the mother, the, the father, the everything. I was my own husband. Like I was also the person fixing things, you know? I was the handyman in our relationship. I was really in a relationship with myself in the end. I had to go through that journey of hitting that wall and waking up and realizing this is what giving to the point of depletion looks like. Don't do it. Listen, I don't wish this person any ill will. I actually wish him the best. I hope he prospers. I hope he shines. I don't really care anymore because what I learned is that I should always and have always been focused on my blow up, my glow up, my bank account, securing the bag for me and me first and only instead of taking care of myself and someone else. If I, I mean, obviously if I was different, I would have done things differently. But now from a place of healed and grown and mature, I look back and I say, ah, here's what should have happened. When his father cut him off at the beginning of the relationship, we were getting to know each other and really, really in love. I should have just said, wow, that's horrible. Um, I trust that you'll find a solution. You'll figure it out. I'm here to help in any way that I can. If you need any assistance, if you have any ideas, if not, if you have to move, either we'll figure it out or it just won't work out. But you know, this is your journey. I trust that you'll figure it out. You can do this. You can handle this and you'll know what to do. And then naturally, he, I think he probably would have gone back to his home country. We probably wouldn't have made it and it just probably would have been over. But since I was just like emotionally attached and in a very broken state, a very broken young girl with a lot of insecurities and self-love issues. Um, I was attached to the perceived nurturing that I thought I was getting from this 
person and uh, yeah, attached to the illusion that just made me feel better. So obviously I did what I could to make it work. And that's the mistake I made instead of just taking care of myself. And, but I didn't have the tools and I didn't know how to. So I understand. I understand where it comes from now. So my message to you, dear person, is take care of yourself. If I had put all the money that I gave him into a savings account, I would have $100,000 right now. And I could really use that money. So, <laughs> ooh, man, would I have been happy. But thus is life. I don't worry about that because if the bag is supposed to come back to me, it will. It will. I am focused on my myself now and I feel great and I, I appreciate the lesson that this was and maybe I was meant to go through it so that I could share this with you and we will all change the way we do things and stop blaming everyone else for our own mistakes. Ain't nobody asks you to be out here giving people food, shelter, love, affection, your body, um, money. Ain't nobody asked you. And if they did, you can say no. You can say no. So if you find yourself having an overflow of love that you've given to yourself, you are secure, you are complete, you don't need nobody else, but you still got so much love to give, share it. You can love yourself and someone else. That's how it's supposed to be, supposed to be. You got knowledge that you've benefited from? Share it. I mean, think about it. Would you give a book that is supposed to be really helpful and really juicy to somebody before you've read it? Nah, boo-boo. You're gonna read that book, gain from it, until you are complete, and then pass it on. Same concept, share it. Instead of going out there and doing activities that other people wanna do all the time and that you don't really like or you wanna do, suggest something that you wanna do. You wanna go to a museum, a movie, an art exhibit, whatever it is that you love, share it. Share it with the people around you. That's another way of sharing. Instead of giving your time to things that don't serve you, that you don't love, just because you think it'll make the people who did suggest those activities happy, you don't have to. You can also share your time by doing something you love and sharing it with people who are willing and desire participating in that because it would make them happy too. You see what I mean? Again, this is giving your time, sharing your time. Nuance. Giving is, I'm going to sacrifice me gaining from this resource by giving it to you instead. That is the sacrificial giving that just leads to depletion. Just wanted to reiterate. Sharing is just beautiful. You got a precious feeling? Share it. Something gave you a really good laugh? Share it. You've got extra money in your bank account and you see this YouTuber called M Angel and you think that she just is amazing and you've got wealth to share with her? Share it. You can also just buy my book, Lavender Kisses, if you want to share the wealth. <laughs> kidding, not kidding. But anyways, I think you understand my point now. And if you don't, stop the video, start it over and watch again. Now we've come to the end of our journey. If you connected to this information, please find the comment section and let's post a little money bag icon. Ching ching. Giving and sharing, baby. The bag, secure it for yourself first. If you have anything to add to the conversation, please do in the comment section. I would love to hear from you, from your experience, from you getting out of a sticky situation of the sort, you realizing that you were in a situation like this, you knowing a friend who was in a situation like this, you might wanna send them this video, share it. And if you're watching this because someone sent it to you, hunsy, boo boo, take care of yourself. You can do it. I'm sending you lots of love, shared love and appreciation and encouragement. You know, you are seen, you are loved, you are valuable. Make sure that you give that to you first, then it doesn't matter who else feels the same. See you in the next video. I'm M Angel signing out.